Well before Perseverance arrived, the western interior margin of Jezero Crater was an enticing science target because it hosts abundant carbonate minerals like some beaches on Earth. Now, a new paper offers a weird origin story for the geology on this episode of Mars Guy. Perseverance and every other spacecraft at Mars are now in a radio blackout for more than two weeks thanks to the planetary alignment known as solar conjunction, as I reported in the previous episode. So I thought this would be a good time to report on a new paper that was just published in Science. It presents observations about the olivine and carbonate-rich rocks on the inner margin of Yezero or Jezero crater. The infrared spectral signature of magnesium-rich carbonate observed with an orbiting spectrometer called CRISM shows a distribution that looks like what you might expect for this mineral forming along the margin of a lake as seen in places on Earth. And Jezero crater with its river channel entering from the left and exiting to the right and a fan deposit that looks like a river delta are landforms consistent with it hosting a lake in the past. There's also a lot of the volcanic mineral olivine mixed in with the carbonate identified by its infrared spectral signature. In fact, there's much more olivine spread out across a huge region outside Jezero Crater in a place called Neely Fosse, named for the rift-like trenches that cut across the terrain. Fosse is Latin for trenches. This is a place on Mars that has the largest concentration of olivine, which is thought to have formed from huge explosive volcanic eruptions more than three and a half billion years ago. There's also small occurrences of magnesium-rich carbonates among these deposits. So the presence of olivine along the inner margin of Jezero Crater was hypothesized to be from the same explosive volcanic deposits in the Neely Fosse region. And the carbonate here was hypothesized to have formed as water from ancient Lake Jezero interacted with the olivine, leading to a chemical reaction known to form carbonate on Earth. So that's the setup for Perseverance. When it arrived in 2023 on the margin unit, as it's called, it did indeed confirm the presence of olivine and carbonate in the rocks. Here's Mars Guy for scale. This is a nice example of ground truthing orbital observations. The scientists interpreting infrared spectra measured from orbit got it right. But the rocks don't have the kind of features of carbonate cemented sandstones you'd expect to form on a beach. The newly published paper looks at three different scenarios, three hypotheses, to explain observations from perseverance. The favored one is that the olivine and carbonate rich rocks formed from a sequence of events, starting with the burial of Jezero Crater by some unknown material. Sometime later, magma was injected from below along fractures that led to layered igneous intrusions. Then over time, erosion removed much of the crater infill material and some of the crater rim and intrusions, opening up the crater floor for emplacement of basaltic lava flows and an early shallow lake. Next came the breach of the crater rim by the river system that formed Naretva Vallis, which led to the Delta Fan deposit, a crater-filling lake, and carbonation of the olivine-rich rocks of the igneous intrusions. The final steps involved erosion by wind and a process that deformed the olivine-rich rocks of the Sita formation, first observed by Perseverance at the beginning of the mission. In this story, the margin carbonate is still a product of the interaction of olivine and water from ancient Lake Jezero, but the origin story of the olivine-rich rocks is where it gets weird, or at least notably complicated. There's no evidence that the crater was ever filled by the material needed to allow for subsequent intrusion by magma to the levels where the olivine-rich rocks are found today. And the processes that could produce such deep erosion to expose the buried intrusions before the lake came in are not explained and hard to imagine. A simpler explanation is that explosive volcanic processes that most likely produced olivine rich deposits in the Neely Fosse region also contributed to Jezero Crater. Perseverance even observed compelling evidence for such deposits. As shown in the paper, there are rocks in the margin unit with angular and poorly sorted materials that could be due to pyroclastic density currents, which come from cataclysmic explosive volcanic eruptions 
that make ignimbrites or tufts, like the one I worked on in the U.S. state of Oregon. It looks notably similar and is not weird science. 